Hello and welcome. Now in this video I'll be trying something a little bit different. This is actually based on student feedback. So some of you guys told me and mentioned that whilst it's really useful to have a look at model answers, especially level 8 and level 9 model answers for different areas of English, it can sometimes get a little bit boring listening to my voice as I narrate these model answers and it would actually be really helpful for some of you for to watch as I am answering the question in live reaction okay so in other words a lot of you have suggested that not only is it useful to see the model answers and to know what a level 9 and a level 8 response looks like however what would be even more useful is if I could actually have a lesson whereby I'm looking at a past paper and talking through and showing you how I would work through this paper if I were in your position sitting exam or a mock exam okay so in this video we'll be looking at how to answer the 2018 or rather the 2019 AQA language paper one okay so this is the 2019 language paper one so what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through how to answer the different questions, how you should even respond to, for example, the insert paper. Okay, so this is one insert, or as remember, paper one is always one source. And of course, also how you can time yourself and how you can ultimately write really good responses for each of the question. So let's get started. Okay guys, so as you know with English language paper one, you always have the insert, so this is the source and it's always just one source, and of course the question paper. So let's talk about the question paper and what you can anticipate, okay? So as you hopefully know from all my other lessons, in the question paper you always have five questions, okay? The first four, which are in section A, are related to the insert, however the fifth question is the creative writing question, okay? So you have a choice between a creative writing exercise or a descriptive writing exercise. In terms of timing, with question number one, always spend roughly around four to five minutes max. With question two and three, try to spend 10 minutes max with each. Try to do a little bit less, okay? So if you can, spend about maybe seven to eight minutes for question number two, seven to eight minutes for question number three. Then with question number four, go for f between 15 to 20 minutes, okay? Again, I would suggest the more you become uh, accustomed to this paper, try to become faster Faster, increase your speed okay so that you can have more time for reading more time for highlighting and of course also more time to check over your answers afterwards then after you spent a max of 20 minutes of question number four with question number five which is in section b this is the creative writing question you need to spend a maximum of one hour okay so as i mentioned for section a spend about 45 minutes that's five minutes for question number one uh, 10 minutes max for question two, 10 minutes max for question three, 20 minutes max for question number four, and then the rest of that time, which is one hour, you spend on question number five. So let's talk through how you should approach this question if you are in exam conditions. I would suggest do not dive straight into question number one. Don't drive st straight either into reading the insert. What I would suggest is look through all of the questions, okay? And of course, always have your pen handy and your highlighter handy, okay? So using your highlighter, look through all of the questions, highlight the keywords that you can know, especially for questions one to four, what you were looking for within the questions. And then of course, for question number five, highlight what you expected to do in terms of writing. And again, you then plan and that guides your focus, either if you're going for the creative writing or the descriptive writing, okay? So let's have a look at how this 2019 paper was structured. Let's have a look at the questions first. And then of course, as I'm going through the questions, I'm going to be highlighting and then we'll look at how to answer each of the questions. So as I mentioned, you always get the past paper question and the insert. Of course, make sure you have your highlighter and your pen ready. Now, instead of going straight for the insert and reading the source, I would suggest always begin by reading through the entire question paper so that it's going through your mind, okay? So as you are reading the insert, after you have an idea of especially questions one to four, you can, at the back of your mind, read this insert quite strategically, okay? So let's have a look at the questions that appeared in the 2019 paper, all right? So now let's look at question number one. Question number one of always gives you a set of line numbers to look at. And so in this case, you ask, read again the first part of the source from lines one to five. There's four things about the motor van from this part of the source, okay? So I would suggest highlight the 
line numbers this is one of the keywords okay so or rather the kind of key area of focus and then also highlight what you're supposed to be looking for okay so of course here it would be four things about the motor van all right so and i would say that's the main thing meaning when you read the source you're then looking for these elements okay then when you look at question number two of course this is the language question you always get this extract don't read the extract just look at what you're asked to talk about so in this case of course you're given the line numbers but you don't need to highlight that because it's already in front of you and you're asked to talk about language okay so of course remember language devices is things like alliteration simile metaphors and so on however language how is it used to describe according to this paper the heart up family okay so of course here we can see that we're going to be learning about this particular family these bullet points are always the same for all the question papers so you don't need to really highlight any of this uh, information you just need to highlight the stuff that's not really obvious so now let's look at question number three and this is of course the structure question so here you do need to highlight where in the source is supposed to be looking at because it's not always obvious okay so sometimes they'll give you line numbers however in this case you're being asked to look at the whole of the source okay and you're told that this text is from the start of a short story that's information you need to pay attention to okay now of course this is the structure question as i told you so in this case and in this question it's supposed to talk about interesting punctuation okay think about ellipsis think about uh, repetition also consider sentence types and of course you're asked to talk about how structure is used to interest you as a reader all right now again here you, the bullet points are always the same of course if you think you might forget what the bullet point is talking about just look at it very briefly you talk to you, you need to talk about the beginning of the source okay and then how this focus changes all right and then any other structural features now i would say the beginning of the source versus how this changes this would go into one paragraph okay so you can contrast the beginning versus the end of the source this would answer both of these uh, bullet points and then any other structural features so here you can talk about uh sentence types you can talk about interesting punctuation okay now let's look at what came up for question number four so this question which is always somebody commenting so here you're told to look at the second part of the source from line 34 to the end this is important to highlight because it's not immediately obvious what line numbers you're supposed to be looking at so of course here you've got somebody that's commenting it's a student and they said this part of the story where alice is sent back okay so here you could say alice is sent back along the ro road to find what has fallen from the roof i would say that is also another important piece of information and she returns with the chrysanthemums okay so the chrysanthemums which is a type of flower it shows you how hard and cruel hardtop is okay so we find that somebody called hardtop we're supposed to see him as really cruel really mean okay so we feel sympathy so all of our sympathy is with alice okay so here again to what extent do you agree i would say you don't need to highlight this but if you're not entirely sure just highlight agree okay always remember this is not a history essay you're not supposed to talk about okay i agree to an extent i don't agree to an extent no you always agree you just find two language points you can talk about in two separate paragraphs two structural points you can talk about in uh, additional two paragraphs and of course your introduction and your conclusion these bullet points do change so you do need to highlight the information in this bullet points as well okay so here it's consider whether alice is treated cruelly by her father okay so that's important and then evaluate so to what extent and of course in this case you're just talking about you know is it a language feature that makes it uh, makes us in this case feel sympathy for alice or is it a structural feature that makes us full sympathy? Again, you're not arguing, you're not debating this. You're literally agreeing. And of course, here you're supposed to support your response with reference to the text. I wouldn't say highlight here because, again, you're not being asked to write in your own words. You always add evidence, okay? So that's question number four. Now, I know that source B, or rather section B, is a different part of the paper. However, I would still suggest read this and look at the question and make sure you select what you want to go for okay so in this question you're given a choice of an image and of course this question and you pick one so in this case you're asked uh, you're told your school or college is asking students to contribute some creative writing for its website okay so this is going to go up on the website and you either describe so this is a description question describe a marketplace as suggested by this picture so this is the description question or write a story with the title abandoned okay so you get a choice and then of course now that you've read the entire paper you have a clear idea of what you're looking for okay so i would say now that you've got this going on at the back of your mind then you switch your attention 
to reading the past paper. So what I'm gonna do is I will read through the past paper with you, okay? And I'm gonna read out loud, of course, in the exam conditions, you're supposed to be uh, reading this within your mind and then just pick out things that really stand out to you, okay? So as you can see here, the blurb, which you always have to read, do not ignore the blurb, okay? So the blurb says, this extract is from the beginning of a short story by H.E. Bates, set in the 1930s. I would suggest highlight 1930s. Hartop and his wife own a van, which they sell produce to people in the local area. So I would suggest highlight Hartop, and then we find out, so he's the man of the household, he's got a wife, they have a van, and they sell produce, so this is market stuff okay to people in the local area and their daughter alice works with them okay so now we know that alice who she is she's the daughter so let's read through the extract paragraph one a ford motor van old and repainted with green uh, repainted green rather with joss heart of green grocer rabbits scratched and streaky white lettering on a flattened out biscuit tin nailed to the side was slowly traveling across a high treeless stretch of a country in squally november half darkness now as i'm reading this i would be highlighting okay so of course here we've got the ford motor van remember question number one asks you about information from this first part so you want to highlight you don't want to highlight too much but you highlight things as you're going along, okay? So it's painted green, okay? And this is what goes on the van, okay? So it has that on the van. It has streaky white lettering, okay? And it's traveling across a treeless stretch of country, okay? So this is telling us about the area, the location in November half darkness. This is pathetic fallacy, by the way. Rain, ha rain hailed on the windscreen and periodically swished like sea wave on the sheaves of pink chrysanthemums strung on the van roofs, okay? So we've got here, pink chrysanthemums, okay? So sheaves of pink chrysanthemums. Next paragraph. Hartop was driving a thin angular man, starved face. He seemed to occupy almost all the seats sprawling awkwardly so that his wife and the daughter Alice sat squeezed up, the girl with her arms flat as though ironed against her side, her thin legs pressed tight together into the size of one. The hardtop's faces seemed like moulded in clay and in the light from the van were a flat swede colour. Like the man, the two women were thin with screwed up thinness that made them look both hard and frightened. So this paragraph is really interesting because it gives us a really clear idea of this entire family. Of course, the general idea that we get is that they are very miserable looking, okay? So here we can see that Hartop, so this is the father, he's a thin angular man, half starved face. Okay, so I would say that's really important. And then let's see how Alice is described. So she's squeezed up, and then she has her arms flat as though ironed against her side. So this is a really powerful simile because we can see that this shows that she's quite timid, okay? And then we can see that the uh, man, the mother as well, all of them seem really thin, emaciated, okay? So I would say that you want to highlight this simile too, okay? So we can see that they all seem really miserable and also they seem quite hardened by the difficulties of life as well as frightened. Now, I'd be quite curious, why are they frightened? Okay, so have that at the back of your mind. Next paragraph. Hartop drove with great caution, grasping the wheel tightly, breaking hard at the bends, his big yellowish eyes fixed ahead, protuberantly with vigilance. His hands visible in the faint dashboard light were marked in the backs with dark smears of dried rabbit's blood. The van fussed and rattled, the chrysanthemums always swishing rain soaked in the sudden higher wind squalls. And the two women sat in a state of silent apprehension, the bodies not moving except to lurch with the van, the clayish faces continuously intent, almost scared in the lamp gloom. And after some time, Hartop gave a slight start and then drew the van to the roadside and stopped it. Okay, so now here, we're getting a really interesting build up, okay? So there's a lot of tension. It seems like Hartop, the dad, is the person who is literally the controlling person, okay? He's literally in the driving seat. However, he seems really tense. He's grasping the wheel tightly, okay? And also he's got big yellowish eyes telling us that he's maybe a little bit sick, they're jaundiced, okay? And there's a lot of vigilance in his movement. So we're getting this sense that they're all really tense, okay? Also this van is described as rattling and fast, okay? So the van fast, which is personification, rattled on a matapia, okay? Chrysanthemums keep on being mentioned here. So I would highlight this and at the back of my mind, I would wonder what, uh, what's this reference, this repeated reference to these flowers, what is this trying to tell me, okay? Again, here we've got rain soaked, pathetic fallacy, high wind squalls, squalls again is onomatopoeia. 
and the women so the mother and alice are sitting in silent apprehension okay so they're really scared they're really um gloomy and they seem so if we go back to this word frightened they seem to be really terrified of heart top okay so now let's move on hear anything drop he said i thought i heard something it's the wind the woman said i can hear it all the time okay so here we can see that he is the person that initiates the conversation and this woman, which is his wife, she seems really apprehensive, really terrified of him. No, something dropped, okay? So again, here we can see he's really insistent that something has dropped whilst his wife is saying, no, 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 there's nothing else. They sat listening, but the engine still ticked and they could hear nothing beyond it, but the wind and the rain squalling in the dead grass along the roadside. Alice, you get out, Hartop said. So here, if you remember question number four, asked you to consider how Alice is treated and why we might feel sympathy. So now we can see here, based on what we've read in the question, that Hartop is quite a mean father, okay? The girl began to move herself almost before he had spoken. Get out and see if you can see anything. Alice stepped across her mother's legs, groped with blind instinct for the step and then got out, okay? So here, this is interesting. I would say highlight this bit, which is groped with blind instinct, okay? It was raining furiously, so the pathetic fallacy is still building up here. The darkness seemed solid with rain. See anything, Hartop said. No. Hartop leaned across his wife and shouted. Go back a bit and see what it was. The woman moved to protest, but Hartop was already speaking again. Something dropped. We'll stop at Drake's turn. You'll catch up. I know something dropped. Okay, so we can see here that Hartop, the dad, is very insistent. He's quite a forceful character. So I would suggest, of course, going back to the points that were raised within the question, this idea that what suggests that he might be cruel, okay? I would suggest maybe highlighting how he speaks, okay? So this is interesting dialogue. And he also speaks using imperative sentences, okay? So speaking in commands, okay? He let in the clutch as he was speaking and the van began to move away, okay? So he's told his daughter to go and look around. Soon, to Alice, it seemed to be moving very rapidly. In the rain and the darkness, all she could see was the tail light smoothly receding. She watched it for a moment and then began to walk back along the road. The wind was behind her, but repeatedly it seemed to veer and smash her, with the rain full in the face. She walked without hurrying. She seemed to accept the journey as she accepted the rain and her father's words quite stoically. She walked in the middle of the road, looking directly ahead, as though she had a long journey before her. She could see nothing. So here we can see that Alice seems to be really used to the terrible treatment of her father, okay? So it seems like she is quite timid, but also it seems like she has accepted this horrible treatment of her dad. So I would suggest highlighting, of course, the pathetic fallacy. The wind was behind her, but repeatedly it seemed to veer and smash her. Okay, so the wind is really violent towards her, similarly to maybe how violent her father is in his actions towards her, okay? However, we can also see how she is very stoic, which means quite passive. She's almost accepting the punishment of being her father's daughter, okay? And here we can see the description of this long journey, okay? So this powerful adjective shows us that she's used to this kind of struggle, okay? And again here, we can also see this simple sentence is quite powerful, okay? So she can see nothing. She's in complete and utter darkness. I would also say highlight the words rain and darkness. Again here, we can see she's completely by herself. And of course, the van seems to be abandoning her, okay? So the tail light smoothly receding. And then, after a time, she stumbled against something on the road. She stopped and picked up a bunch of pink chrysanthemums. So here she is again with these pink chrysanthemums, okay? So there's this constant reference to the chrysanthemums. And then she began to walk back with them along the road. Before very long, she could see the red tail light of the van again. It was stationary. She could also see the lights of the houses, little squares of yellow with the, which the recurrent rain on her lashes transformed into sudden stars. Okay, so here we can see the metaphor that's being used to describe the light that's emitting from the houses near them, which of course juxtaposes and contrasts quite sharply with the darkness that Alice is engulfed in. Okay, and of course, also this simple sentence the van being stationary it seems quite ominous this van that her dad is driving is quite terrifying really scary when she reached the van mrs hartop said what was it only a bunch of chrysanthemums hartop himself appeared at the very moment she was speaking only he said only what do you mean by only a eh? so again here we can see hartop 
is very threatening and quite abusive in the way he speaks to his daughter. Alice stood mute, then Hartop raised his voice. Again, here we can see Alice is quite passive, very quiet when her dad is talking to her in a condescending way. Well, don't stand there, do something. Go on, go on. Go and see who wants a bunch of chrysanthemums. Move yourself, okay? So here he's speaking in a series of exclamatory sentences. He's also talking to her in uh, using lots of imperative language. Again, what we can see from these sentences is that her father is quite cruel. He's quite mean, he's quite abusive. Alice obeyed at once. She picked up the flowers, walked away and vanished all without a word, okay? So of course, as we can see here, when we're thinking about even how the source develops and given that it's the uh, beginning of a short story, we can see that there's a lot of tension within this family, okay? And now, after reading this, we find that the tension, the source of the tension comes from Hartop, the dad. He seems quite angry. They also seemed to be maybe not having a great life, okay? So perhaps the business that they use to uh, sell produce, this is uh, the work that they do. Maybe it's not making a lot of money. The dad is quite frustrated. His wife, who interestingly, we never get to know her name. She also seems to be very passive, very terrified of her husband. And of course, Alice has accepted this terrible treatment from her father, okay? So as I've suggested, do always begin by reading the question first, okay? So read the question paper, highlight the questions and the keywords, and then use that and that information at the back of your mind to guide the highlighting that you're doing as you read the questions, okay? So let's proceed to looking at each question and responding to each question within the paper. So that is it. If you enjoyed this style of video where I give you a more direct demonstration of exactly how to go through each question piece by piece, do let me know, okay? Because I'd be more than happy to produce more videos in this style and more lessons within this framework, okay? So if you have enjoyed this video, do make sure you let me know and I'll be more than happy to produce more videos in a similar format. Thank you so much for listening.